Well, blessings, everybody, and welcome back to our study of Matthew, the first part of it. Today, we're in lesson four, video number one, and we're in Matthew six. Matthew chapters five, six, and seven is Jesus teaching. It's often referred to as the Sermon on the Mount because he was simply speaking for some things on the mountain to a few thousand people. So as a quick review, we've seen in Matthew chapter one and chapter two that Jesus is Messiah. He's the son of David. He's king of the Jews. In chapters three and four, we saw that John and Jesus preached the same message, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then in Matthew 5, we just saw this last week, that to enter the kingdom, one must be righteous. Well, okay. But the righteousness must surpass the righteousness of the hypocritical scribes and Pharisees, the professional righteousers. It's not just keeping the law, but it's fulfilling the law. And so Jesus was saying, when you've heard that said this, which will be the truth of the law, but I say unto you, and then he would up the ante, shall we say. So there's be no anger, no lusting, but we're to love and pray for those who persecute us. Now, in Matthew 6, make sure that you read this today, okay? Matthew 6. He's saying this, beware of practicing your righteousness so that you're being noticed by men and not rather than being noticed by the Father. Again, he reiterates and builds upon the argument of that man's righteousness must be exceeded. Not what we're seeing with the religious practitioners, but something else. These folks paraded it before men and acted all holy and pious. And he said this, Jesus said, you know what? They've received their reward. It's not from the Father but it's the acknowledgement of those that are here upon the earth. Uh, Jesus points out three separate things right here at the beginning of this chapter. The first one is giving. How do you give? And he says you give to the poor, but not to do it as the hypocrites do. Don't sound the trumpet, let everybody know what you're doing, but do it in secret. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. And give before the Father, and you'll be rewarded by him. And he said the same way in praying. Don't pray like the hypocrites. You're going to see that as a common thing. Don't do things as the hypocrites. They love to stand and pray in the synagogue and on the street corners to be seen by men. But when you pray, he said, go into the inner room. Go into the secret place. The Father will see you there. He'll reward you. And he also said, don't pray like the Gentiles. Meaningless repetitions. You know, they thought they said some over and over and over and over again that it would be done by their gods. He said, don't do that. And Jesus gives them an example here. Uh, quite often people will call this the Lord's Prayer, and it's really not. It's a model prayer. It's a prayer that Jesus said, pray in this manner, in this way. And you, and we see in Matthew and in Luke, the cross-references, you did some um, some insights here, that we're to worship and praise the Father. We're praying according to His kingdom and according to His will and submission to Him. Asking for provision every day. Confessing and forgiving and asking for forgiveness of our sins. Asking for deliverance. And then close with a time of worship and with prayer. Then Jesus picks up fasting. Again, he says, don't do as the hypocrites do. They put on the gloomy face and everything. He said, don't do that. Anoint your head. Wash your face. In other words, go about the way you normally would. Not to be noticed by men, but to be noticed by your Father who sees in secret. You know, in this chapter, we see the words, do not, ten times. And it occurs three more times in the next chapter. And what he's saying is this, do not practice righteousness before men to be seen by them. Now, in the balance of the chapter... Jesus says, make certain that you don't store treasures for yourself here on earth, but treasures in heaven. Because he says, where your heart is, there will your treasure be. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And he says, don't worry about life, food, clothing. Don't worry about tomorrow. Today's got enough problems of its own. But one of my favorite verses in all the scriptures that I think is so applicable to us every moment of our lives is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If we will seek first his kingdom, if we seek forth first his righteousness, he will add these other things that we need. He knows what we need. He knows what what, what our um, wants and desires are even, but particularly clothing and shelter and things like that. You did a cross-reference, I believe, in Proverbs chapter 3. And the bottom line is this, trust in the Lord alone in everything. So I encourage you to do that today. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Trust only in him, not in your ways, not in what we can do, but trust in the Lord God. I'm Dale from the Precept Classes in Coleman, Alabama, and I thank you for being with me. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.